Good morning, internet friendos, and welcome to another episode of Life According to Joel. Uh, now it's been a pretty big hiatus uh, for my vlog. Um, I haven't been doing it uh, since last spring. Um, and that is because I was dealing with uh, an abusive situation, um, which I'm not going to go uh, more into because I don't think it deserves my time or discussion. Um, however, it did bring up a very interesting topic uh, as I was uh, dealing with that situation, which is uh, responsibility. And more specifically, uh, what responsibility do us as autistics have uh, in our actions and what responsibility do neurotypicals have in dealing with autistics um, and setting aside um, gaslighting and lying and uh, sociopathy and just psychotic behavior of some other individual um, it is important to actually talk about normal people, uh, normal neurotypicals and normal autistics and um, ways that we can work together, uh, better understand each other and take ownership uh, for our uh, problems. So if an autistic person does something um, and they need to empathize and understand uh, from the neurotypicals point of view, how do we do that? And Likewise, uh, from neurotypicals, how do you stop and empathize, understand, and uh, take ownership for your actions uh, when dealing with autistics? And I think it's important um, to remove uh, the good and the bad and look at each person's perspective and understand that responsibility uh, is one's ability to respond. So uh, back when I was at Vancouver Film School, my instructor, uh, Ken Ashdown, in team leadership building, he used to talk about responsibility as the ability of one person to respond. Responsibility. Basically, uh, the premise is, if one cannot respond, one cannot be held responsible uh, for an action if it is outside of your control, uh, then it is not on you uh, to take responsibility for that action. And that really hit me and it also helped me as an autistic understand what I can be responsible for and what I can't hold myself responsible for. Um, but it also um, is important for neurotypicals to also understand is actions that they need to take responsibility for or do not need to take responsibility for and how we can bridge our communication gaps uh, to have better, stronger friendships, stronger uh, romantic relationships, stronger uh, work relationships and all around uh, stronger and healthier uh, environment uh, for everybody involved. Um, and so just looking at uh, myself as an autistic, uh, something I started um, about two years ago was creating something called communication boundaries. Now communication boundaries means I'm like, essentially I'm saying I need to verbalize uh, what I am communicating and I need what a neurotypical is communicating to be verbalized to me. And if a person does not verbalize what they're feeling to me and I react in a way that isn't appropriate, but I'm unaware, I cannot be held responsible for my reaction. And at the same time, I can't really hold the neurotypical responsible because the neurotypical didn't verbalize um, their emotions. Now, can a neurotypical be upset with an autistic person for not empathizing or understanding emotions that are not verbalized to them? Um, no. That's not fair to the autistic person. Uh, if you are a neurotypical person and you are used to communicating with other neurotypicals, that's great. Um, but if you're wanting a friendship, relationship, or you have a colleague who's autistic and you don't verbalize your emotions, you cannot expect the autistic person uh, to recognize your emotions. And so I realized in my past relationships that a lack of verbal communication 
was uh, leading to a lot of miscommunications. And so a couple of years ago, I was like, you know what, I'm going to set my foot down and I'm going to create this boundary that's going to be really good for everybody involved. I'm going to say, hey, you know what, uh, I'm not going to accept a lack of verbal communication. You need to verbally communicate um, because if I end up getting hurt or you end up getting hurt and it's due to a lack of communication, um, that needs to be uh, resolved. Now, that is one way I've tried uh, to bridge this divide uh, between neurotypicals and autistics. And honestly, it's a work in progress. Uh, I'm an adult now, um, and every relationship I go into, it's a, again, it's a work of progress. It's trying to figure out how to take that communication barrier and work it in a way that a neurotypical feels respected and valued, and the autistic also feels respected and valued. Um, now, how do we, as autistics, uh, take responsibility uh, for our actions um, that are our actions? And when I say our actions, I'm not talking um, an autistic meltdown. I'm not talking I'm in an environment with loud noise and lights and I freak out. Um, that's not on me to take responsibility uh, for being in that environment. Now, I can take precautions and I can take responsibility for not wearing sunglasses or not um, taking care of my own uh, needs. Um, but I can't take responsibility for a meltdown. I can't take responsibility for something that I am not actually responsible for. It is outside of my control. In the same way, um, a neurotypical can't really take responsibility uh, for reacting in a way to a meltdown, for example, because a neurotypical isn't used to experiencing autistic meltdowns. Um, another way, um, I can't read body language and vocal tones, and this has led to me breaching people's personal space in the past. And unfortunately, a lot of the time it is female friends or it is love interests, and they don't verbalize uh, that I have breached their boundary. They just go tell other people, um, which is not cool um, because it isn't on me to read body language and vocal tones. It is on another individual to express that their boundaries have been breached. At the same time, if I find out that somebody has felt disrespected uh, or that they feel unsafe or that they feel harassed or that they feel something else, it is on me as an autistic male and a male in general uh, due to rape culture and uh, our environment uh, that gives uh, women a very insecure uh, space um, to take responsibility for making sure that we do not contribute to a woman feeling unsafe. Um, and that can involve, uh, if it has to, the police, it can involve involving a union or guild, it can involve involving friends, it can involve family. Um, basically, as autistics, we are responsible to make sure that uh, the people in our lives, women and men, uh, do feel safe and that they do feel respected. And I think a big problem that contributes um, to miscommunications and difficulties between autistics and non-autistics is just the lack of education uh, that people have. Um, <laughs> I got in a fight with somebody the other day and they brought up that I was a savant. And I was like, I'm not a savant. And it was a very interesting conversation because they watched too much Good Doctor. And I had to sort of laugh at them. Um, and I mean, they, they, they really thought I was a savant and they thought that I could do all the superhuman stuff and was super duper intelligent. And I was like, you watch too much TV. Um, but that's also a factor um, that is important to discuss when talking about responsibility. Um, can you blame somebody who's uneducated, uh, watches too much Good Doctor, for example, uh, for thinking that an autistic person is super duper intelligent and capable of doing all this stuff. Can you blame somebody who turns on a news feed and sees autistic shooters and uh, idiots on TV going, oh, it's the autistic mind that caused that person to shoot? Can you blame a neurotypical for getting scared because of that? Um, and can you hold them responsible for their actions? 
you can hold them responsible for not taking the time to educate themselves. However, you can't hold somebody responsible uh, for something that's outside of their control. If they haven't had the access to a proper education and they haven't had the opportunity to learn about autism, um, it's really hard to hold the person um, to account for something there that's outside of their control. Um, and on an autistic uh, part, it is our job to educate people uh, as to the fact that we're not shooters, um, to the fact that we aren't terrorists, we're not going to blow up a building. Um, it's important to educate people to the fact that, that we're not evil geniuses. Um, I can't hack a computer, I can't hack a smartphone, I can't outsmart the government, I can't fly. Um, I wish I could fly, that would be freaking awesome. Um, I can't carjack a car, hotwire it. Um, can't solve amazing math problems, can't take a sniper shot from here and shoot somebody in Coquitlam. Um, there's all these things that people think that autistics are capable of doing and it's on us as autistic people to also uh, reassure neurotypicals that what they see on TV isn't always true. Um, and I think that as a society, we have to be more open to taking responsibility for our actions and coming together to help autistics and neurotypicals uh, live a more cohesive and peaceful coexistence. Um, because I think if we take the time to listen to each other and we take the time to take responsibility uh, for our actions, uh, we can create a better environment where uh, sociopaths and gaslighting narcissists don't actually drive a wedge between uh, neurotypicals and autistics. And maybe we can have a world where uh, you don't have an autistic shooter. And again, I'm not saying autistic people are shooters, and they're not. Um, but if we create a more co cohesive world where people are more understanding and loving and compassionate to each other, I think we could reduce the amount of conflict between neurotypicals, autistics, but also bipolar people and schizophrenics. Um, understanding's better. I mean, it worked for the LGBTQ community. It's worked for reducing racialized crime. Uh, not right now. Uh, racialized crime's at an all-time high, but you get what I mean. Um, understanding what other people are going through and their perspectives is important, and taking responsibility for our actions or lack thereof, um, and taking responsibility for our mindsets and our prejudices is important. Um, so, I'd like to end this tape. Um, <laughs> this vlog entry and saying love all you people and I'm going to be creating more of these in the near future uh, go out love your life, live your life love your neighbor, love your friends love your family, love your lover um, just live a love of love and have a great day PEACE